that's how you, oh, and then you, oh, you take the antiderivative of that thing, should you be more original formula. Does it say you have the antiderivative of that? Yeah, you took the antiderivative of I mean, yeah, you took the antiderivative of this. Yeah, and that should give you more original formula. Yeah. Yeah, that gives us our original, our original function, yeah. That will take the root of that should be that. Yeah, it will be. Yeah. inside the 10th power function, right? It's the only composition I see, right? Yeah. Com oh. It's a composition and a product. So this would be our first guess. We didn't know anything else. This would be our first guess because that's where the composition lies. So if that's the case, then du equals cosine theta d theta. Well, that's fantastic. That's the leftover stuff over here, right? This is going to work perfectly. We don't have to finagle any constants. So this is the same as saying u to the 10 du. Right. Which we know is the same as <coughs> 1 11th u to the 11th plus c. And we replace u back again, we now get an 11th times sine to the 11th power. Let's see, there's our answer. So check real quick, differentiate in your mind c goes away, 11 comes down and cancels. I'm left with a sine of the 10th power, but to complete chain rule, I got multiplied by the derivative of sines, I get to the cosine multiplied on the outside, that is my integrand, it's over. Right? Since du was um, already what was out there, you didn't really have to do anything extra? That's right. Okay. Yeah. I just want you guys to see this with the trig ones too, don't get confused by them. Since the tenth has been multiplied, 
I can take the tent to the outside immediately when I write the new integral, right? So how does it read now? One tenth integral one on u du. Agreed? And why do you why do you divide the ten back over the one tenth? Because up here I didn't have ten d. I had one dx. Mm -hmm. Remember this is like being multiplied. And the book, a lot of times we'll write it. You know, the dx is sitting up there already. So since I only have a one dx, but my relationship has ten dx in it, I would like to have it just read dx like I have here. So I would divide off by the ten. Okay. Du? Yeah, du. du is the, the change in u, infinitesimally small change in u. Which is 10 dx. It is in this case. It's 10 times the infinitesimal change in x. Yeah. You wouldn't write that? You wouldn't write that anymore. Here, I did. This expression implies this expression. So now I replace dx, I replace this with the 1 tenth du. dx is 1 tenth du. You cannot have a mixture of variables within your integral. It's like it's, it's an operation. What? It's not. It's, rep it's a representative of something. It's a variable, it's not a solid by number, right? Mm -hmm. That's an operation. Yeah. It doesn't have to change things. Like these things that you would say operate. <laughs> DDX is an operator, but once you've operated on something. I mean, like DU. You know, like DU is kind of the same word. It's an actual form. It's not an actual represents a variable change. That's right. So it represents an infinitely small change. It's a, it's a operator. It's like a non-differentiable variable. You see, like this number defined. Only once you pick the point. Yeah, if you pick where the change is happening, then you can just pin it down. Here we're saying this is always true. However much x changes, 10 times that is how much u changes. Any change you want. All right? Antiderivative of 1 on u is ln u. So we have 1 tenth ln, and again, you should use the absolute value of u here. There's no limits of integrations. There's no reason to say that I'm not using negative quantities. It could be negative quantities. So you got to use the absolute value in this case. And then plus c. And then just retransform this back to the original x. So 1 tenth ln 10x minus 3. And again, unless you were certain that the quantity inside but the expression inside will always be positive, you should use absolute values. Plus C. There's your answer. Yeah? Why do you have to use that the wrong? Why do you have to? Yeah. It's because the one on U, the antiderivative of one on U, is natural log. That is one of our uh, rules. That's the one case the power rule doesn't take care of. The negative first power. You have the negative first is not handled by any power rule. It's specifically the natural law that makes that happen. It's a question. Yeah. So, oh, because um, you decided to take the antiderivative of the one over u, mm -hmm. du. Yep. Yeah. That's this guy. Okay. Plus c because it's just antiderivative, and one tenth because one tenth is still sitting there. Place u with the original expression of x because your answer is supposed to be antiderivative for that, not for this, even though they're highly related. So you should have your answer back in x at the end of the problem. Okay. 